nice and quiet and go where it's, there's order. Exactly. Perfect order in the wilderness. The wilderness is in perfect order. Notice that the connection here with why God brings them into the wilderness. Not only to get them away from the, the kings and the elves within the countries, but then to bring them into a place of order so that they can become order. So that Israel can learn what order is. Midvar is wilderness. It's a place of order. Now let's take a look at one other word here. And this is the word ir. Ir. Anybody know what the word ear means? Not ear like on your head. <laughs> this is a Hebrew word. Ear is a city. Now let's take a look at, uh, I'm not going to go into all the words, but all of the different meanings of related words to ear. Ear is, is, is a root that has several related words. One of those is blind forest, but in the sense of darkness, the darkness of the forest. Enemy. Enemy. Notice a common thing with all of these. These are chaos. Chaos. So the cities are a place of chaos. The wilderness is a place of order. Now, this is one of the other reasons why God had to take the, the Abraham out of Ur and Israel out of Egypt, because Egypt and Ur are chaos. The wilderness is order. By the way, in the first century, in the days of Yeshua, when they baptized uh, or did the mikvah in the Jordan River or any river or any mikvah for that matter, uh, what were they doing? Why did they do it the way they did? Yeshua is standing on one bank, and we don't really get this from the text. Okay, You can't get this just from reading the Bible. So, uh, By the way, I hear a lot of people say that, that they only use the Bible, and that's the only thing they use. If it's not in the Bible, they don't, it, does, it doesn't apply. Well, you really can't do that because by understanding the culture, and some of the things about their culture, you can understand the Bible better. When they did the mikvah, whether it was at a mikvah or at the river, what they do is they start on one side, they would go into the water, and they would cross the water to the other side. Why? It's a sign of being outside of Israel, crossing the river and into Israel. It's this, it's, it's this idea of leaving chaos and coming into order. There's a lot of this imagery in the Tanakh. Uh, Ivrit, the Hebrew word Ivrit is what we is Hebrew, Hebrew, and Ivrit comes from the root Avar, which by the way our word over comes from this. It means to cross over, to go over to the other side. Avraham was an Ivrit; he had crossed over to the other side into the wilderness, the place of order. When Yeshua went to pray, where did he go? Every single time in the New Testament, when Yeshua went to pray, where did he go? The mountains. Or away. Right. The key is away from people. It was the wilderness. Whether it was the mountains or by the lake, the garden, he went to where people weren't, where civilization was not. He went to a place of order. Just like when we want to go camping. If, if you've been in my teachings before, one of the things that you've heard me say over and over and over again is Hebrew is a concrete-oriented language. Greek is abstract. In Greek thinking, in our Greco-Roman culture, we're comfortable using abstract words. For example, grace. If I asked you to draw me a picture of grace, could you do it? Could you, draw, could you sit down and draw a picture, and I'll look at that and go, oh, yeah, that's grace. No, you can't do it because it's an abstract. Hebrews, while they can think in abstracts, all of their abstract concepts related back to something concrete. And that's in it. without understanding the concrete meaning of grace in the Hebrew perspective, we don't understand what grace is. There is the Hebrew word chen. But what does chen mean? Well, remember we talked about the Hebrew nomadic tent, okay, and, and the goat hair tent. We were talking about the tent. Now, remember I mentioned that Abraham had hundreds of people within his camp? Okay, when they did a camp, when they set up camp, it wasn't like we think of a bunch of tents in a in a bunch in an area. Okay, that's kind of the way we think of setting up a bunch of tents. You know, kind of like a like an army camp with a you know tents all over the place. The way they set up their tents was in a circle or a semicircle, kind of like circle on the wagons type concept. They were always in a circle. That is chen. That's chen. The tents in a circle. If you're out with the flock. You've been out for weeks with the flock, out in the wilderness, you're getting them water and grass, and you're coming back to the camp. 
and you come over the rise and you see that circle of tents, what goes through your mind? Now remember, you've been out in the wilderness for days. You're probably hungry, tired. You know, what's at that circle? It's your family. It's food, water, uh, love, compassion, home. Yeah, home. That's, that's exactly what Chen is. In fact, notice the similarities between Chen. I believe home comes from the word Chen. N and M are both uh, dental letters. They're called dentals because they're made with the teeth. And very common when from one language to another, N's and M's swap a lot. So our word home probably comes from Chen. Now, can we understand grace better as home? Beauty is another way of understanding it. Beauty. Not just physical beauty, but everything that goes with it. All of those emotions and feelings and, uh, and sustenances. So that's grace from an ancient Hebrew perspective. Sukkah, or the plural, Sukkot. Okay. Sukkah, what is a sukkah? Yeah, shelter or a tent. It's usually a makeshift shelter, something that's put up fairly quickly, and it's mostly just to keep the sun off you. When you were guarding the garden or watching over the flock, you would erect this structure as a shade place, a temporary shelter. Right. Let's go back to Israel. They were at the Mount Sinai. God gave them the, uh, the Aser HaDevarim, the, the Ten Commandments, if you will, which, by the way, the Ten Commandments doesn't exist in the Bible. There is no such thing. It's the Aser HaDevarim, which is the ten of the, th ten of the things. Okay, ten of the things, uh, or ten of the words. There's the word Devar. He brought them to, to the mountain, gave them the Aser HaDevarim, and he said, you guys do these. And then I'm going to take you into the promised land, and you guys are going to have all this land. Well, something happened. They, uh, it's called the golden calf. So God said, you guys blew it. You don't understand it. I'm going to make you wander. Oh, well, not only that, but then they went to the land. The spies went in and said, oh, we can't go there. There's two big people, and we could never take it. God says, forget it. You know, you guys don't get it. So he keeps them in the wilderness for 40 years and makes them wander around there. Why? Because, one, the wilderness is a place of order. Secondly, if they have to depend on God, that's part of the nomadic lifestyle. Okay, and then after 40 years, he says, "Okay, now I'm going to take you into the land, and you guys settle in the land. But, but, for one week out of every year, I want you guys to go back into the wilderness. I want you to remember what it's like to be in the wilderness, in the place of order, where you're not dependent on the cities, where you're dependent upon yourself and upon me." Okay, and that is called Sukkot. That's why we are supposed to be celebrating Sukkot. Not only it's a festival, sure, yes, and it's a harvest thing as well, but it's also a time when God wants to bring us back into that wilderness to learn what it means to depend upon him. So in a nutshell, the Hebrew nomadic lifestyle is related to the Hebrew culture and their language, and that's what the Bible is all about, living that nomadic lifestyle.